So here at the GA 2015, as we wrap things up, what a pleasure it is to stand with a very, again, a dear friend, President and CEO of Jewish Federations of North America, who is doing a fabulous job leading not simply the federations, but in essence, a major piece of American Jewry, Jerry Silverman. First of all, Mazal Tov. Thank what a wonderful much. GA. Um, and you know, but when you go back and you, and you sit with your staff, there are ways in which you will analyze this that have nothing to do with what you would say to the, to the community at large. Sure. I'm asking just for the community at large, you know, what pleased you about it and how did you feel in general the GA went? So what pleased me about it very specifically was the dialogue. There was great debate going on all through the GA. Uh, what also pleased me was the amount of young people here. Yes. The students, the young leadership uh, representation by communities was all over the, all from all over the continent were here and young leadership cabinet here and their voices were listened to and they were from across the board and it I took pride in listening into some of the sessions and listening to the energy and listening to the dialogue it was robust it was rich there were challenging questions mm -hmm. asked it was an open tent there were people from varying viewpoints uh, and there was learning that took place here and what I like is people said, I learned this, I'm taking this back to my community. We discussed this in this manner. I want to take this back to my community. And th there was a real sense of an idea of thinking forward. This, this GA was about building bridges to move towards unity in our community after a rough summer. And I think we made progress. You made fabulous progress. By the way, I had the pleasure of speaking to one of your daughters after the session where you spoke. And we spoke to each other. And again, there's something about this. I have no right to be proud of you. I was so proud of you, though. Oh my and my goodness, the remarks you made, both in terms of the stature you presented and the content of what you said, was out of this world. And I want to remind you of something you said. You talked about how important it was, from your perspective, for two ideas, that you wanted people to care and you wanted people to be involved. Those were Jerry Silverman's words to you know 3,000 people here. Speak to me a little bit, amplify that for me a little bit. What about the caring and the involvement are you hoping for in rank and file federations and Jewish communities across the country? So caring is about purpose. Bring purpose to your life. There's so many ways to do it. There's so many ways to do it within our community. So there's no barriers. There shouldn't be any barriers. We need to have a wide tent, but have purpose because purpose will mean that you care. Purpose and meaning brings such a richness to life, especially in the Jewish community and across the Jewish community. You know, my mantra is to say, engage in Jewish life. Mm -hmm. It's not engage in Federation life, it's engage in Jewish life across the community in whatever flavor inspires you. And so, that's really what I mean by caring is bring meaning into your life because there's so much meaning here from a sense of across the board and from a sense of engage, you know, hineni, step up, don't be on the sidelines, life's too short, get involved in something um, and engage because we welcome you. Yes. We, we absolutely welcome you no matter what background or what interest yes. or, you know, any of the things that I said yesterday in my speech, it doesn't matter where your mind is at or where your positions are at or where your financial status are at, you know, what your family life status is. It doesn't matter. Get in the game. Yes. By the way, I mean this seriously. There's, no one has said this the way you have. The concept of inclusiveness and inviting people and embracing people is something that you represent and the Federation is so lucky to have you, we're lucky to have you, but I want you to know that piece of the message, really you did very, very, very well. Um, and that first plenary, you had a number of people, one after the other of the other, talking very personally. And Jerry, I thought that was one of the strengths of this year's GA. And yes, it's important sometimes to get theory, but 
the personal was very powerful. Now, I had my favorites, but I want to hear, you know, I'm, we loved every one of them, okay. But as you think about the people who spoke for you at the Federation here, what were one or two of the individuals who touched you in a way that even surprised you, even though you had, you know, been part of the planning? So first of all, I have to say, I'm so blessed with the greatest organization and team because it takes the entire team of our organization to put on a GA. It is just a massive effort, and, an, and it's a labor of love, but it is an effort, so I congratulate my team. I, I have to say very personally uh, that my experience with David Gregory was something amazing, because David came in and someone said, you need to talk to David as he came into the building. And David, who I've met before, who I have the utmost respect for, you know, says to me uh, and holds my arm and says, can I get a private room before I go on? And I said, David, you look shaken. What is going on? And he looks at me and he said, I lost my father in the last 36 hours. And I said, Oh my, I said, David, why are you here? Please, don't feel obligated, cancel now. You know, do what you have to do if you're, you're going to California to the funeral, go earlier. If you need to be with your family, go earlier. And he said, Jerry, I've canceled a number of commitments, but I don't wanna cancel this because I don't know, I just feel I need to be with community. And I just really want to do this. And I said, David, far be it from me to tell you that we as a community won't embrace you because I'm certain the entire audience will embrace you at this moment and want to hear your story. And so, of course, we'll give you whatever you want. But no, there's feel no. He said, no, it's, it's, it's what I feel right now. So before he went on, I was already... <laughs> you know, yeah. for bludgeoned <laughs> completely by something, you know, that's so real. And I thought his words were heartwarming. And I thought the entire, per, in, the, just the kahal embraced him. I mean, if, if you could see this hug that was going on with him as he told his whole story, and I thought that was just a beautiful moment. Uh, from a point of the GA. That gorgeous, was one. Gorgeous. Many people, Jerry, told me that he was the most moving for them. I was also very moved by the Canadian judge, Supreme Court Justice. Justice Abella. Uh, Justice Abella. And I was also, I thought, Deborah Messing's story also was quite beautiful. Did either of those touch you? So Justice Abella's story was magnificent. It was beautiful, Deborah Messing's story of, of her life. Um, was one that was wonderful. My daughter, who Deborah is a client or was a client of my daughter, so she had a relationship with her. So I had heard about Deborah's story before and was so thrilled that she came to the GA. So, yes, Deborah's story um, did touch me. I thought um, uh, the head of the opposition, I thought. Herzog, yeah. Minister Herzog. Bougie Herzog. I thought his speech was... Did very well, didn't he? I thought it was one of the best speeches that I've ever heard Isaac Herzog ever I agree give. 100%. I thought it was unifying. And I will tell you the Prime Minister of Israel's speech today. I thought it was fluid. It was in absolutely the theme of the GA, which was think forward. Yes. Um, the tone was wonderful, too. And that's what I told him when he came off stage, and I congratulated him. I said, your tone was beautiful. Um, it, it really uh, set a, a whole new uh, story and, and set a whole new pace of what's going on. And so I was, I was really thrilled with what he said. And, of course, my, my chairman, who is leaving us, Michael Siegel, I thought he was magnificent. I want you to talk for one moment about Michael Siegel. This year, this federation was also a year of transition for the federation. And, you know, uh, uh, there's a succession. And Michael talks, you know, in terms of the symbolism of Moses and laying on the hands for the next generation. 
But I do want you to speak for one moment about the transition that the Federation is going through right now. You remain, but your lay leadership is, in, is evolving. What's it mean, and as we look forward now to a new Federation, JFNAs, next year, what does it mean for you? Well, we're blessed in the Federation system with truly amazing volunteer leaders, brilliant, uh, high-profile, intellectual, strategic uh, leaders. I mean, we're just, it's, it's a real blessing. And so having a transition of Michael Siegel, Dee Dee Feinberg, Stephen Silverman to a Richard Sandler um, and Susie Stern and Jody Schwartz just is a huge, it's, it's a change. You know, they have different views. They will ha bring different uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we're going to see is a transition where the past leadership really enabled, empowered, and helped strengthen the national organization and its relationship with our federations and really bolster our influence both in Washington and Israel. I think the new leadership directly is going to focus even more on our value proposition in how we can strengthen our federations, strengthen our local communities, and get closer to our, our local communities. Mm -hmm. As you look now, from your perspective, Jerry, what are the two or three most press pressing issues that you believe, number one, the Jewish community must deal with? and the JFNA. JFNA does deal with virtually every issue, but there are some issues that are beyond JFNA's specific purview. But as you look right now, what are the issues that are challenging Jewish life? And as the president of JFNA, what are the issues that you feel you must address head on? There are challenges that are complicated. There's nothing easy here. But what are the challenges that you see as we begin a new year? So I think by far number one is the true engagement in Jewish life of uh, the next generation across the board. Mm -hmm. I think that we're already be we're beginning to already see federations and communities invest more and more in the next generation of leadership and the next generation of Jewish life. I think you're going to see major, major investments, new programs, innovations, collaborations that are going to be with major organizations together, working together, thinking it through, and collaborating. And I, I see that happening. Number two is, I will tell you what keeps me up at night also, is who's going to be sitting around our tables in 20, 25 years? Mm -hmm. The professional leadership and the volunteer leadership. And I believe we have to put significant efforts on developing our future leadership uh, for the Jewish world. We need to have a plethora of talent to face issues that we can't even think about mm -hmm, today mm -hmm, over the next mm -hmm. 20 years. It's our responsibility to ensure mm -hmm. that we have an amazing bench of talent. Mm -hmm. Uh, going forward. And I think number three, the we need to continue to work on the Israel uh, diaspora relationship. As issues come up, and I think the new normal is there's going to be challenges, there's going to be issues. We have to figure out a way to have the debate, the dialogue, create the open tent and processes for discussion. Um, and to ensure that, as I said yesterday, that we do not have to have unanimity on the issues, but we have to always put in front of us that we have unity. Mm -hmm. I think those are three major That's issues over the said. next couple of years. Well, I give you a lot of credit because you had the opposition leader, Mr. Herzog, and you have the prime minister, Prime Minister Netanyahu. There was, by the way, a lot of commonality in what they said and speak just about some of the things that the prime minister spoke to. You know from the, the room was electric when he was there. And look, he's a superstar in the Jewish world. So we get to hear him 
the JFN, the GA of the JFNA makes it possible for us to hear the Prime Minister. He comes a day after he speaks to the President at the White House. And the issue of how do you make peace with the Palestinians, how does Israel now handle a post-Iranian debate, the deal is the deal, and what about the BDS movement? Those were three things that Netanyahu spoke about. To what extent, first of all, do you feel that these are also concerns which the JFNA will deal with, as well as, and this is what you've just referred to, Netanyahu came out with a very strong statement for Jewish pluralism in the state of Israel, and this new commission he's going to create that is going to deal with non-Orthodox Judaism. I have no idea, Jerry, if it's going to be successful or not, but I appreciate the fact that it's on the table. So. Those are the issues that, that American Jews in general are concerned with as they think about their relationship to the state of Israel. Just, you know, whatever comes to mind, just talk about that for a moment. So I, I think that, you know, as it pertains to the, the political and the, the issues that um, Israel has from a sense of a two-state solution, I think we support as a federation system, we support the concept of two state for absolutely. two peoples. Absolutely. We absolutely support it. How they get there and how they're going to get there, you know, that's probably above our pay grade. Um, but we support it absolutely. wholeheartedly and vehemently. We support it. Uh, and we're hopeful. You, you just have to remain hopeful that a barrier can be broken, a wall can be torn down so that that can move forward. I think as you talk about the BDS, the delegitimization is real. And it's one that I think is going to get worse, not necessarily just on college campuses. You see what the EU is doing by wanting to label products from, you know, across the green line. They want to, uh, actually they're talking about other issues to segregate those that live upon, uh, beyond the green line. I think it's just going to get worse. You know, we developed something called the Israel Action Network five years ago. It is making a huge difference, working in collaborations with Hillel's, working with our federations out in the communities, not necessarily front and center. Um, we don't need to be front and center. We can win with a ground game and with a grassroots campaign. And there intellectual firepower is is truly amazing and we think we think that that's something that is very very important to to battle and i would say the third thing is connection connection to connection to israel you know 43,000 kids i went to the birthright steering committee meeting 43,000 kids are going to go on birthright you know in this coming calendar year you know another 12,000 will be on masa Another few hundred are going on a JDC and Twine program. Uh, the Jewish Agency has their new Onward program, which is internships in Israel. They should reach 15 to 1,700. Um, the more we get young people to Israel, both from a sense of connection to create curiosity about who they are as Jews and what place Israel has in their lives and how it affects their identity. The more we do that, the Prime Minister talked about the investment and the continued investment uh, in creating these connections. I think we as a Jewish community both have to foster them in a big way and then have to be able, when these young people come back to the States, to engage them and to, to help nurture that flame that has been ignited. By the way, I hope that you hear a theme in Jerry Silverman's remarks, and it's what really thrills me the most and why I feel he is one of the more extraordinary individuals who is in a position of leadership. Now, we have great people throughout the Jewish community in positions of leadership, but here you're seeing somebody, you know, a committed, caring, practicing, active Jew who cares about the Jewish people. But what you hear from Jerry, I don't mean to embarrass you, but what you hear from Jerry over and over again, it's about people and connections and relationships. And that's the essence of, first of all, the Jewish tradition, but it's also the essence of what the Federation system is trying to do, what JFNA is trying to do, and really what is going to make 
Jewish life sustainable into the future. And it is so wonderful to hear your constant refrain about connection and people. Um, almost done. The Prime Minister also spoke about the virulent expressions of anti-Semitism. And he talked about how much of the criticism of Israel, when it's unfair, there are fair criticisms of Israel, but the unfair, the unfair are manifestations, he suggested, of anti-Semitism. And he then said, it was a charge to all of us, to you too, we must speak out. There must be voices that defend the Jewish people, that defend the state of Israel, and will not let the lies of anti-Semitism, which he said go back to Hellenistic times, and we know all what the blood libels were, but that when there are lies today being told about the state of Israel and the Jewish people, there must be a voice and voices. I want you to speak about the importance of your voice. By the way, it's what I hope JBS is. I hope JBS is a voice against the nonsense, the lies, the anti-Semitism. You and I have a responsibility, but I want you to speak for one moment about what, what you, know, the, you were given a charge today. Speak about that charge from the, from the Federation perspective. So, A, we appreciate the charge. We welcome the charge. We accept the charge. Uh, and I think that we've already begun uh, responding to that charge uh, because we are, I believe, an organization that is in the game. When we see uh, fabrications beyond, we step out. We will step out and, and be very public about fabrications and falsehoods, whether they whether those falsehoods are about the changing of the status quo on the Temple Mount, which is just Bubba Misa, and one that continues to rear its head back to the 20s. I mean, it, that was one of the instigators of the pogrom of 29 in Hebron, was that cry that the Jews are going to take over the Temple Mount. And so whether it's that issue, whether it's the lies, just the abhorrent lies at the United Nations or the resolution at UNESCO about the fact that the Western Wall is part of the Al-Aqsa uh, Mosque, I mean, it's beyond. And we're out there um, being very clear, arming our communities with information. Yes for them to use uh, within their communities and across their communities, Fabulous. Jewish and non-Jewish. So this is something that is real and, and something that is in our DNA. Yes. Well, it's, again, it's one of the most important things I think you do, and I love partnering to be able to use JBS to get your message out, and together we will combat the lies. So I want to end as I begin with your own remarks when you spoke at the plenary session. And you said, you know, it's not easy to be a federation leader. You said that. And then you talked about what brought you in. And you talked in a very moving way. I thought you were going to cry at one moment about your mother and how she became nurtured by the Federation of Cleveland, where you come from, and how all of that in some way brings you to where you are today. So, you know, if we were sitting down in studio, I'd, I'd have you give me a long story. But I want the short story. I want, I want the essence of it. The story, how you end up here, from your mother and your experience as a child to now becoming an adult who understands that one of the things, some of the things you do are the most important things that are going to shape and sustain and really save the Jewish future. But I want you to talk about where that comes from and just to amplify for one moment a little bit about your mother. And I know you're saying Kaddish for her uh, today, but just talk about that for one moment. So th thank you. Um, and, you know, I love the partnership with JBS, not only from a professional level and how you get the word out, but also how you bring the r realness to it. So thank you, and thank you for the question. I love talking about my mother. I, I you know, I'm her name again, Florence. Florence. You know, I'm blessed. Um, you know, I have my mother, and I have such an amazing, uh, strong wife, Erica. I married way above myself, <laughs> uh, and 
I will share with you that, that growing up, my mother's strength and her fortitude in fighting for life and fighting for Jewish life and putting family at the absolute front burner of it all and that values in family and family closeness matters more than anything because if you have a close family and you have a close bond and it's if it's steeped in Jewish values and Zionism then there's nothing we can't do and my mother talked about it my mother lived it for every day of her life you know today's her 12th yard site I'm, to this day, I miss her terribly. It's like a piece of your heart gets cut out. It doesn't grow back. But she brought that to us, to all our family. I have two siblings who made Aliyah because of her inspiration. Uh, I have three, two nephews and a niece serving in the IDF right now. Uh, and I know that somewhere my mother's looking down with pride on her children that are living in Israel, on her grandchildren that um, are living Jewish lives, that are connected. Uh, and this concept that people talk about all the time, but is so real of Lador Vador. Generation you know, to generation. You know, we are, she gave us such an amazing foundation. And I just hope that we live up to the standards that she set for us. You are doing a marvelous job doing so. You're a tremendous tribute to your mother, to all those who brought you into this world and then gave you the soul, the neshama you have. You are doing so fabulous work. And again, it is such a, an honor to be a friend of yours and that you always make yourself available to the Jewish people through JBS. But congratulations, Mazal Tov, on a fabulous 2015 GA. It'll be the first of many, many more and there's a lot of work to do, but Jerry, you have very strong shoulders and we will, we will rely on your strength and you will always have a home here as well. And I thank you for all you do for the Jewish people, the state of Israel, and for me. And I uh, thank you very much, my pleasure. And Jerry Silverman. And Mark Golub. <laughs> JBS TV, <laughs> don't ever turn it off. Thank you, my friend. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.